Hello. Okay, hi. Um, so we're looking at the free response questions. I haven't looked at them yet. Um, I just thought they'd be really good. So we'll read on together. The first part is just really just directions. Let me go ahead and see if I can save this. No, I'll have to hit markup. Hit markup. No, I have to keep marking it up. Okay. So, so the first question goes, you are permitted to use a calculator for solving this question, show all your work, and let's go to the problem. So that's my graph. I can't reduce the size. Okay, so let f be a continuous function defined from negative one through eight, including inclusive of the endpoints. So negative one is over here, negative one is over here, and eight is over here, whose graph consists of two line segments is shown. Let g and h be the functions. g is some square root problem. And h is some um, exponential with a sign. Okay, those both look terrible. Okay, the function k is defined by k of x is just multiplying f times g. Okay, find k prime. Okay, I don't know why I wrote that, but find k prime. Well, k prime is just the derivative. So. Here we go. The derivative is f k prime is equal to f prime g plus g prime f. Okay. And they said specifically find it at zero. So k prime at zero is f prime at zero, g at zero, plus g prime at zero, and f at zero. Now, a couple of things that you want to figure out is, well, what is f prime? f prime is the derivative, which is the slope. Well, what is the slope of f, because this graph is f, at zero? What's the rise? What's the run? It looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six over three. Six over three is two. f prime at zero is two. What is g at zero? Well, here's g, plug in zero. g prime, g prime take the derivative. Derivative of g is one over two square root of x squared plus, not plus, minus x plus three. Chain rule, two x minus one. I'm going to plug in zero here. And then the last one is f at zero. What is the not derivative? What is the actual point at zero? The point at zero is three. So you have all those values. Plug it in, we're good. Any questions about this? If you're good, give me a thumbs up or a yes. Okay, let me pause. Okay, so we'll just go in and finish plugging in the rest. Uh, we set f prime, which is right here. That's our f prime. Our g of zero is we're gonna plug in zero right there. Our g prime is we're gonna plug in zero here. And f at zero is just this point right here. It's hard to see that, let me use a different color. Zero point right there. So plug in values. We said this was two. If I plug in zero here, that's just zero minus zero plus three is square root of three. Our g prime is plugging zero over here. That's one over two square root of three. And two times zero minus one becomes a negative. So it's gonna be a negative Hey, the uh, negative uh, one over two squared of three. And f at zero, which is the value three. Now, if this is a free response question, which it is, this is your answer. Don't try to simplify it anymore.
Okay, for part B, the function m is defined by m is simply just the quotient m is equal to f over 2g and they say find f prime and five now don't overthink it just take the derivative like they ask you what's m prime just take the derivative in this case i have a quotient rule that's a g i'm going to actually factor out the one half to make my life a little easier i'm going to take one half and then it's going to be times f over g and when I take the derivative of this, m of x prime is equal to 1 half, where I have big parentheses of everything else. So it's f prime of g minus g prime of f over g squared. Well, do we know f prime? Well, this time they want us to find the slope at 5. So let's rewrite this. Let's figure it 1 over 2 f prime f prime at five, g of five minus g prime of five and f of five all over g uh, of five squared. Okay, so what's f prime of five? If we go back up here and look at five, five was from our previous value. We said it'll, the rise over run was something like, I think it was negative, darn it, I think we need to see it. I think it was negative two over three, yeah. G prime at five was negative two over three. It's like negative two, one, two, three. Go away. What are we doing? Oh, it's because I'm tapping too high. And then our g of 5, so we plug in 5 here, 5 and 5, that's 25 minus 5 plus 3 is 20 plus 3 is 23. The square root of 23. So 1 over 2, negative 2 over 3, square root of 23 minus g prime, we had the derivative of g prime was, sorry, this is the wrong letter. g prime was one over two square root of two, uh, x squared minus x plus three times two x minus one. We plug in five here. We said that was a square root of 23. And 5 times 2 is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. So we're going to write it as 9 over 2 square root of 23. And f at 5, the value of 5, that looks like it's going to be 5. A question um, was the g prime of 5. The g prime, what is the derivative of 5? And that is going to be this part right here. The graph given is not g, it's actually f. I just miswrote this here. This part was wrong. I used the wrong letter. This was in relationship to this right here. That was the letter f. I just miswrote it. Okay. Now, one thing you want to make sure is that that answer right now as I wrote it down here is actually wrong. I made a slight error when I wrote it. Okay. And if you guys haven't caught it yet, it's because I didn't write my parentheses completely. So make sure you include your parentheses. And now we're okay. If you leave the answer like that, 100%, you're good. Um, one more thing I need to remember to divide by g squared, which I didn't, and there g uh, squared, g at 5. We plugged in, we said that was the square root of 23. So the square root of 23 squared. And that's our answer. Okay, our last question is c. Find the values uh, between negative 1 and 2 such that the derivative of f equals the derivative of h, okay? 
the derivative of x equals the derivative of h. And that is between negative 1, x is between negative 1 and 2. So I see negative 1 is over here. Let me go ahead. I can't look that up. Um, I can. It's between negative 1 and 2. So we know that f prime of x between when x is between negative 1 and 2, this will always be rise over 1. Rise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Run, 1, 2, 3. 6 over 3 is 2. We know it's going to be 2. So we're going to have to look for when is f prime of x equals to 2. They gave us the equation for f. So for, they gave us the equation for h. h is equal to h of x. is equal to 5x e to the x minus 9 sine of x. Fine. What's h prime? Take the derivative. Take the derivative. That becomes 5 e to the x minus 9 cosine of x. I'm going to try to make that equal to 2. Now, an exponential and a sine uh, there's no way for us to solve that. And that's why this problem was a calculator problem. Let's see, let me rewrite this. Five e to the x minus nine sine of x. That's the copy of h of x. And when I take the derivative, five e to the x is five e to the x. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So, we're gonna go ahead and take this, and I'm going to, all the way around, sorry. We're gonna try this inspire again. The new graph. I'm gonna move this to the left. Let's see if it'll stay up. Okay, it won't, it's terrible. We move it to the right. Okay, so let's go ahead and write our first equation. We five, e to the x minus 9 cosine of x. You know, we'll graph that. That looks quite terrible. Okay. And then let's graph our second one. Oh, I remember how to do this. Double tap. We write our second equation, two. So we're looking specifically between the values of negative one, when x is negative one, and uh, two. Now we see it probably intersect only at one spot. It's gonna be right there. Let me see, is there a action, analyze graph? Intersection point. Oops. Sorry, I didn't read the directions. Directions will say pick a left and right. Get rid of this. This section. Lower left hand corner says lower bound. Upper bound. And they gave us their intersection point. So when x is equal to 0.622, that's when, let's go ahead and bring back the two. Oops. The question is, when is f prime? equal to h prime. f prime is always going to be 2 between negative 1 and 2. So when is h prime going to equal to 2? We found the intersection point when x is equal to 0.622 in the graph. Show that one more time. Okay, 
we have f on the left and g prime on the right. So just to prove this to you, to make this make sense, um, let me go ahead and talk about what f prime is. f prime is the derivative. So are we increasing or decreasing on the left? We're increasing to about this value, and that's where we go, our zero. Positive slope, positive slope, positive slope, positive slope, and zero. Negative slope, negative slope, negative slope. Negative slope, negative slope, negative slope, negative slope. All of the two-ish, we have another zero. A little bit before two. And then it's all positive slope, positive, so positive here. All of a sudden at, these are all positive. This is a straight line. That's why we're a straight line here, because the slope doesn't change. Right here, we have a corner. That's why it doesn't exist. And negative, negative. Negative, negative. Okay, just to show that this kind of makes. Makes, makes uh, the F prime graph. Pause. Okay, so let's go ahead and read through the question. Um, find the average rate of change of f overall the interval between negative 1 to 4. How many values of x in the interval from negative 1 to 4 does the instantaneous rate of change of f equal to the average rate of change? Oh my goodness. Okay. So the average rate of change is, let me pull out this part. If you guys remember average rate of change, like it's just f of b, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So we want to go from negative 1 to 4. And negative 1 is negative 2, and 4 is positive 1. So we'll call that 4 is our b. So we'll write it quickly as f of 4 minus f of negative 1 over 4 minus negative 1. And this is our overall change. The average rate of change is our overall change. Is that a positive change or negative change? Positive change. So it's going to be four, sorry, 1 minus negative 2 all over 4 plus 1 is 3 over 5. And if you count it, it looks like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the average rate of change. Now, how many values of x between negative 4 and 4 does the instantaneous rate of change change of f equal to the average rate? So, at what point on the graph? would we have the same exact slope of 3 over 5? And that would happen when is the slope 3 over 5? That's right. Come on. Right here. Oops. Oh, kind of cool. Oh, it works. Ooh, look at that. Okay. So it says for how many values of x. It doesn't ask me for what values of x, just how many values of x. 